Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at the Gorn Guz Azog uh, class. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher the dickens out of this one. But the Gorn uh, Battle Cruiser. So uh, we do have a small write up here, uh, and I will read it from what we have on D6 Holocron. So the Gorn Starship uh, was a type of vessel utilized by the Gorn Hegemony during the mid 23rd century for conducting raids. The Gorn ship was designed with four Nala cells, and its class configuration was unfamiliar, unfamiliar to Federation prior to the late 2260s. In 2267, a Gorn starship approached the Earth outpost on Sidious 3 at space normal speed using the outpost's uh, regular approach route. Before the outpost knew what hit them, the Gorn ship knocked out the outpost's phaser batteries with their first salvo, leaving the outpost defenseless. The weapon used was described by a survivor as being like phasers, only worse. The Gorn ship continued to assault the outpost until it was obliterated. The Gorn starship later attacked the USS Enterprise, which had been lured to the colony by false, false signals. The Enterprise's counterattack with full phaser and photon torpedo banks proved ineffective against the deflector screen of the Gorn ship, which was located just outside of visual range. After the Gorn ship retrieved its landing party via transporter and withdrew from Sidious 3 um, and attempted to flee into the area uncharted by the Federation at the time, the Enterprise pursued and eventually overtook the Gorn ship at warp 8 before both ships were mobilized by the me uh, Metrons. And this comes from the original series Arena. Uh, the source for all of this information is coming from Memory Alpha, Gorn Starship, uh, Ship Recognition Manual, Volume 4, Space Dock, pages 103 and 104. All right, so what we have here from D6 Holocron. We do have a nice view of what the Gorn ship was. And a lot of this stuff, you know, I want to say when we actually got a, a, uh, an actual picture of the Gorn ship, it was from one of the FAZA books uh, because they were the ones that were doing the role playing game. Um, I do not believe that it was actually on screen back then, it was just kind of allured to because they did not have the time or money constraints to actually come up with models for all the different ships that they had. Um, that's why so often in a lot of the shows, they really repurposed the same ship, gave it different color, did whatever they could, just to kind of change it up a little bit. One time it would be facing one way, the next time it's another way, so on and so forth. And we see that with star, star bases as well. Uh, because, you know, the budgetary restraints that we have. Um, so looking at this, it is an interesting type of ship. And as we go on here, this is a cruiser. It's a capital scale. Uh, it goes roughly about 312 meters long. And just a little change. Uh, for the ship mass, it's 1,510,000 metric tons. It is a size 6 starship. Uh, has an autopilot of 2D plus 2. Has a crew of 375. A skeleton of 38 can take care of the ship at a plus 10 to the roll. Can carry 100 troops. Cargo capacity is about 50,000 metric tons. Has enough consumables to last out in space for about 2 years. The warp drive is a 5. 5.8 and a 6.5 for 12 hours. That's how the Enterprise was able to overtake it. So if I want to put it in, I'm going to grab, now this is, I'm going to kind of sneak down here and see what time. We have early to mid 23rd. So I will take the original Constitution class. Now I want to see what we have for our warp drive, which is an 8x and 3x primary. 
I'll copy that. And we're going to sneak on over here. All right. Oh, still don't have it. There we are. Okay. I've got a, you don't see it, but on my screen, I actually have a, um, <laughs> uh, kind of little window here that, that keeps getting in my way whenever I'm switching from one ship to another. Okay. So I'm going to take our warp drive. So I'm going to sneak on down here. I'm going to paste this in, but I'm going to make this one a little bit slower. Uh, let's see. We'll paste that, and it will be um, times four primary. Uh, and we're going to have to back up at us of eight times ten. Now, the Gorn, and thinking of the Gorn, in a lot of the same regards as the Cleons, they're stronger than humans, have, have about the same intelligence, uh, but their aggression is a little bit higher, and their strength is higher. So, uh, you know, as, as far as that goes, uh, they can be a threat. Uh, if we can keep our wits about us and outsmart them, that's one thing, but, you know, at the moment, you know, they're, they're not that far off intelligence-wise, so don't don't take it that, that wrong way. It's just that they'll let their honor and their uh, emotions kind of get the best of them. Just seeing it in that regard. Um, you, know, you start seeing red because you're, you're just that upset and everything else, and they will work themselves into a rage a little bit faster. Um, which is great for hand to hand, but unfortunately, sometimes doing the tactics can get, you know, things can get away from them. But they worry more on their uh, their weapons and all that, trying to make sure that their weapons are actually done at a higher level. And sometimes the shields or the something else that the Federation can use can actually kind of outdo it. So, in this case, it's our speed. So, looking at all this, we work down to. Our hyperdrive, of course, we're going to have a nav computer. Maneuverability for four nano cells is only a plus two, which is actually pretty respectable for the time. Space is a 7.5. Hull is a 2D plus one. Shields is a 1D. So the shields is actually, I believe, a lot better than what the Federation was, because if I remember correctly, the Federation ship at this time was only like plus one, plus two. Okay, uh, sensors, passively you can scan out to 4 kilometers, actively you can scan out to about 12 kilometers, you can just search for 15 kilometers, and focus for 500 meters. Weapons, they have narrow wave type uh, 6 disruptor cannon, has a forward arc of 180 degrees, takes a crew of 1, fire control is 1D, you can shoot three times around, does 2D plus 2 damage. Has photon torpedo launcher. It's forward, but are self-guided. Again, it's a crew of one. Fire control is 1D plus 1. You can shoot three missiles or torpedoes at the same time, or in one round, you can do 3D damage. We do have two class beta tractor beams, one forward, one aft, and that is a fire control of plus 2. Fire rate is 1, strength is 2D plus 1 to kind of transfer, or, you know, use it as a tug vessel. Uh, and then, of course, for our shuttle bay, we have class Alpha Tractor Beam, Starfighter Scale, fire control is plus 2, strength is at 3D. So all the miscellaneous stuff here, we have crew quarters, we have barracks housing for 360 crew members, Spark for 60, basic is 10, expanded is 5. This is 12 decks tall. Uh, let's see, escape pods for 100, or there are 140 with four uh, crew capacity in each one. This was commissioned in, in early to mid 23rd century. That's why I looked up the original one. Keep it on par with everything. Transporters, we have three personal transporters with a capacity of six, six people per pad. Three emergency transporters that can carry up to 22 people. Four cargo 
pass or cargo transporters that can move 200 kilograms at a time. It does have complement for four four shuttlecraft and 30 probes. And this all comes to us from Memory Alpha Gorn Starship. Now, I don't have the Gorn in the book that's I've, I've got pulled out right behind me. I do have it in some of the other books and all that stuff. But I don't know if it's this ship that they have or if it's one of the others, just being honest. So that's why I didn't grab it from there. I figure I would take it straight from this. That way we're all staying on the same page on this so I'm not grabbing from something else and then we're just way off in the, in the weeds here. Okay? Uh, you know, the Gorn had made a brief appearance in the original series and then we really didn't see them. I believe that they had redone the Gorn a little bit in the Enterprise series. Um, and I do remember seeing the Gorn, but it just didn't seem right. They were using the CGI and seeing that I had grown up watching it as the original, it just didn't fit. And that was really a lot of my issues with the Enterprise. It wasn't the story, it's just the visuals were getting better and the technology that we have because, you know, we're doing it in the 2000s, is it 2000s? Late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere in that neck of the woods. And I'm still used to all the stuff from back in the 60s, okay? So I really want to just leave that impression on you. I'm used to them trying to redress TV screens that were black and white to something that looked like it was futuristic. And now we get flat panel monitors, which just, it makes sense. But my little brain just couldn't wrap itself around it, so... It's really me that had an issue with it. I'm not saying the program was bad. I'm just saying I had issues with it because the visual effects being better than what we could have back then and so on and so forth. Uh, and it, it, it just made it rough for me because it's like this is supposed to be before, but this looks like it's after. So that's just me. Okay. Uh, but it is nice to be able to see this out again. Uh, you know, we don't really run into the court ever again uh, beyond that. You would almost think at some point maybe the Gorn would be drawn in and become friends with the Federation or maybe the Klingon Romulan Alliance or something, right? Um, maybe they team up with the Tholians or something. I don't know. Just saying. Uh, you would think that at some point we would run into some of that stuff, but we just never do. With that, thanks so very much for joining me today. As always, it's wonderful having you stop by. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.